Sony was kind enough to lend me the FX30 and of course I just had to try it out for some wildlife encounters to see if it's something to buy as a wildlife photographer. I'm sharing my thoughts on the 4K 120fps video recording feature, photography performance, ergonomics and if this is a good purchase instead of putting your money on something like the a7 IV for example. So I uh, grab some snacks, lay back and enjoy. So since I consider myself a wildlife photographer and not a professional cinematographer, my knowledge around cinema cameras and everything around it is fairly limited. So in this video, I won't get into detail into in-depth specs and all the different types of file formats and so on. I'll leave that to the professional cinematographers. So this video is more about the basics and how it is to actually use the camera for bird and wildlife filming and photography. So first, how's the ergonomics of this little bad boy. So I really like how this camera feels in your hand. It feels very sturdy and not like a toy. It feels like a professional piece of gear, which it is. And the flip out screen comes in very handy. And if you've used one, you know what I'm talking about. It's enough said about it because it's a flip out screen, but it's very, very welcome. So similar to my main camera, the a7 IV, the handle is pretty big. And in my opinion, it feels very comfy to grab onto. And I personally prefer a bigger grip when used with bigger lenses like this. And you have a dial in front of the shutter button, similar to the Alpha series. And on top, we have dedicated buttons for ISO, white balance and iris and the iris is the aperture and these can all be customized just as the c buttons on the sony alpha cameras so the joystick is placed on top of the camera and personally i'm not a fan of this placement so when i'm out shooting i many times use the focus area spot which means i have to quickly change the focus points depending on what i shoot and what i need to focus at and with the joystick being where it is i feel it's quite inconvenient to use but I guess that's because wildlife shooting is pretty spontaneous and this camera is made for professional cinematography which is usually very planned out on set and it's not really the same thing. I guess I can understand why they put it on top to save some space on the back. Uh, something I really enjoyed is the much larger record button. So wildlife photography is very quick. To be able to find the record button super easy comes in very handy. And when you press the button, the whole camera lights up like a lighthouse <laughs> which is actually very nice it's always good to be 100 percent sure that you are recording when something fascinating is happening like in front of you however if you find yourself in a situation shooting very shy animals in a very dull area the red light could potentially scare the animals away but luckily you can customize this in the settings and i chose to turn off the front light and leave the back ones on but you can turn off all of them if you want to. The wildlife photography is 99% of the time done outdoors. And here in Sweden, it's often very cold outside. And I think this camera works well using gloves outside. So one of my biggest concerns before I got to try out the camera was how is it to shoot without a viewfinder? 
And I know many of you are wondering the same thing. Uh, and now after using it for a while, my simple answer to that is, it's okay. I use the viewfinder on my a7 IV a lot. To be able to concentrate and isolate the screen inside the viewfinder is very, very good. And I think it's much easier to find focus and to see if something is sharp. And I think it's overall much easier to, to review the shot inside of the viewfinder. But we do have tools for this, such as the histogram or focus peaking. So I guess it's not mandatory to have a viewfinder to set the correct exposure and focus. But I clearly prefer to use a viewfinder for the convenience, convenience, con convenience of it. And to be honest, I guess most people will use this camera with an external monitor anyway. Uh, worth mentioning, this camera has a little fan on the left side of the body uh, and it's pretty quiet, so it hasn't been a problem for me whatsoever. And how is it for photography? The uh, image quality looks good, more on that later, but we have one big issue. It can only do single shooting, one photo at a time. And if you've done bird and wildlife photography, you probably know that being able to burst a lot of photos quickly is a very big perk to have in a camera. But if you're a gamer, you can probably be able to burst a bit at least. So how is the image quality? I will let Future Ole talk about that in the studio. See you soon. So unfortunately, the raw files of the FX30 isn't supported by Lightroom yet, but I hope we get the files supported pretty soon. So this photo is shot at 800 ISO and I find it quite noisier than on the a7 IV and the a7 III at this ISO value, but the sharpness and details are there and I think it looks good. And if you throw this image into uh, something like Denoise AI, you can easily remove this type of noise without problem and have a noise-free image with a lot of details left without adding like tons of artificial sharpness because I think the the photo files has the sharpness there already and this is not sponsored by topos labs by the way but i have a link to the software in the description which is an affiliate link so if you purchase it via that link i get a small commission and it helps me and the channel out a lot so which is highly appreciated so if you're looking for a great noise reduction program topos labs is very good if we take a look at this photo taken at 2000 iso uh, we are starting to lose detail and we have a lot of color, colored noise. I don't know the specific name for that, but uh, but I think the, the details are still there. If we look at the, the, the feathers or here, you, you still have the sharpness of the feathers. But coming from the a7 IV, uh, this is a lot more noisier than I would want to at 2000. But if you use a noise reduction software, even if it's Lightroom's inbuilt or the Denoise one, you can easily use this type of photo as well. And what I mean use, I mean like post it and print it out and so on. But it's very important to have a well-lit scene with an APC camera like this. Otherwise the image quality will fall apart pretty fast. Because to be honest, 2000 ISO is not much. I've shot photos at 12,800 with my a7 IV. I can imagine shooting like owls at dusk with a camera like this is pretty, pretty tricky. <laughs> so I personally wouldn't buy the FX30 if your main thing is photography, but Sony knows that that's not what the camera is meant for. So I will talk more about this in the conclusion at the end of the video. Let's talk about how this camera performs and what it's made to do videography. Back to past Ole in the forest. Bye. So coming from a full frame sensor, the first thing I noticed is how cropped in the image is when, when shooting. Since this camera has a smaller APC sensor, we see a 1.5 crop in the image compared to a full frame camera, such as the a7 III and IV, for example. And this full sensor is used when you're shooting 4K24 all the way up to 4K60. But what makes this camera very interesting, especially for us action filming people, <laughs> is the camera's ability to shoot 4K 120 FPS. But with this setting enabled, it crops in an additional 1.6 times. 
And in wildlife filmmaking, this can be a very good thing. Many times you're really far away from an animal or you're shooting a very tiny animal and all the extra reach you can get is welcomed. And yes, that is true. It's very, very nice to have that extra reach when you're shooting something very far away. So here's an example of what 600 millimeter looks like on a full frame sensor compared to the same focal length shot on the FX30 at 4K 120 FPS. But as good this might sound and look, it could also be very limiting when you're trying to get the opposite, a wider view. My widest lens I own is the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter 2.8. If I would pair this lens with the FX30, shooting B-roll at 4K 120, the 17 millimeter focal length would be equivalent to something around 41 millimeters, which is way too narrow for situations when I want a super wide view. And that is why you can find APC lenses that are really, really super wide, like 10 millimeters. And that's because it's made for APC cameras. So when recording in 120p, you need a faster shutter speed than you normally would if you would choose to, to record in 24p, for example. And this results in way less light coming into the sensor, meaning you have to rise the ISO quite a lot to compensate. And this will add noise into your footage and you will start to lose detail. But this camera has a dual base ISO at 800 ISO and at 2500. Sony says that it should have about the same level of noise on both the 800 and 2500. And I find this to be partly correct, but I had to raise the ISO above 2500 to be able to correctly expose for S-Log3. So I use the Sony 200-600 for most of my time outside with this camera, giving me fantastic reach. But the aperture of 6.3 and the needed shutter speed of 1 over 200 forces me to raise the ISO way more than I would want to, giving me grainy footage as I talked about. But for an example, if you can live with the equivalent focal length of 432 millimeters, Using this with the Tamron 70 to 180 mm 2.8 lens gives you way wider aperture and more light and still the reach of a super telephoto lens. And it's also way more compact than a lens like this. <laughs> you can easily shove it in your bag and this is a lot more trickier to have with you. Uh, something worth mentioning is that the active stabilization of the FX30 doesn't work when you're shooting in 4K 120p. And at the equivalent of 1440 millimeters every little shake you do is very aggressive in your shot so you might need an additional crop in post to be able to reduce the, the the shakiness if you don't have a very steady tripod and aren't doing much movements but i personally don't find this as a very big problem so what about the autofocus so i find the autofocus of this camera to be quite reliable when it's locked on. But if there's a lot of branches and stuff going on in your frame, it can be quite tricky to find focus. And I do find this more sensitive to bad light than the a7 III and the a7 IV. In bad lighting conditions, it tends to hunt for focus a lot more and I had to help the camera to find focus sometimes. But in daylight, I think the autofocus works very well. And the bird eye autofocus tracking is very quick and snappy. So when using the wide focus area, the camera tends to focus on to infinity quite often, but you can adjust the focus sensitivity in the settings. Uh, you can also change the focus limiter on the lens to make the autofocus more reliable and quicker depending on the scene. And you have this little neat feature called AF Assist on the FX30. And by enabling this, you activate the focus override feature that you just need to turn the, the lens dial or what do you call it, the, the focus dial <laughs> on the lens and the camera goes into manual focus. And when you let go, it continues to hunt for autofocus. And this is very, very good if you need to help out the camera to find focus, as I said, where when it's a lot of branches and stuff going on. So that feature was very helpful to have enabled on the camera. So my overall thoughts of the autofocus performance is good for both photos and video. And if I'd owned this camera and used it for a long period of time, I think I could elaborate a bit more with the AF sensitivity and AF transition speed in the uh, focus settings to be able to get it to work more like I would want it to work. Uh, this was just a quick test, so it's not really fair to be honest. So is the FX30 worth getting if your primary goal is to shoot wildlife with it? So if you have the money for an FX30, I'd say it's better to save up a little bit more 
and get the a7 IV. I find the a7 IV handling low light way better than the FX30. And yes, I am missing the 120 FPS feature, but many times 60 FPS is enough. And what's really the point of using 4K 120 if it's all grainy anyway? If you watched the video in the beginning, you can clearly see there's a lot of noise in the shadow areas of the shots taken with the 200 to 600. I however find the footage taken with the Tamron 70 to 180 way more cleaner and it actually looks very good. And the forest shots, they're taken with the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8. Those shots look very crispy and good in my opinion. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if we're planning to get this camera and use it with a lens that has a wide aperture of 2.8 or below, you will have amazing footage and the image quality is very, very good. If you, however, tend to use like a 200 to 600, you really need to be in a well-lit scene to have use for the 4K 120p. Otherwise, it will be too grainy. And remember, this is just my opinion based on my type of shooting and where I live. So here in Sweden, it's super dark outside this time of year. And so I guess it's a pretty challenging situation for an APC camera. So if you're thinking to use this camera as a hybrid shooter for both video and photo work, once again, I recommend getting the a7 IV. And for me, being stationary at a spot where I don't have either time or space to carry two cameras, having a camera that can do both video and photo really well is very convenient. And so I hope this video answered some of your questions. And I know that I barely just scratched the surface on what this camera is capable of. I thought it would be nice to at least have a short little video about what I think about it as a wildlife camera. So are you or are you not getting the FX30 for wildlife shooting? Tell me in the comments. And if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps out a ton. And I really appreciate seeing all of you in the comments, it means a lot. So until next time, my friends, have a good one and I will continue to freeze in the Swedish forests and see the days getting darker and darker. Oh, oh, I miss spring. <laughs>